of Saharan Africa, including South Africa, and they won't lack anything. But because of our country, we are not respected. Here, with all due respect, the two professors in our faculty are Nigerians. They are on sabbatical. They are likely to leave at the end of the year. They are already appealing, can you get us more Nigerians? We have these, but we are not respected because we do not take advantage of our, our what we have, our facilities. So this is where I come in. We are, we are highly skilled and highly talented and blessed people, but many a time we lack strategy. Nigerians tend to lack strategy. Um, you can have good skills. If you, if you don't know how to let people know it is, it's there, it dies. Like having a, a factory full of items in the warehouse. If you don't advertise it, it remains in the warehouse. Sir, they have harassed us a lot. I know that. I'm often on the road. One day I was, the day I was driving in, I had my workout things in the car. The Ghanaian police took my dumbbells and walked into his car and said, I have taken it. A colleague was with me. He said, what do we do? I said, well, you got it. Let me go and urinate first and come back. I urinated and came back and said, go and bring it from your car down to this car. And he did. But sir, I can tell you something. From his accent, I'm a professor of English. From his accent, he's a Ghanaian police. From his accent, I can bet my life he's a Nigerian. I can bet my life. He ha he's a Nigerian policeman. He's a Ghanaian policeman, but he is a Nigerian. His accent is obviously Nigerian. The key things you used to identify where somebody comes, all of them. And when we left, you know, that day my, somehow as I packed my things, I misplaced my papers when they were opening things. And they, they, they delayed me from Aflao to Winneba eight hours until somehow I got the paper. So what I'm saying is, we need strategy, sir. I'll suggest something which the embassy can think about. I know they know, which they can do immediately. And the Nigerian community. There is bad image for Nigeria. We can take it back through the press. We can reverse it. We have powerful Nigerian media stations. Channels broadcast all over the world. Um, well, AIT has a problem now. Uh, uh, NTA does. Many others. There's online, active online social media, the blogs in Nigeria. Let them come. Look at what we have said here today. Let them come here and run documentaries of the experiences of Nigerians and blast it all over the world. In three days, Ghana will respond. I have been a media person. I have been a media person. You cannot be here and suffering. Let the leaders get our media guys come here. Cover what has been happening. Go to the student community, go to the business community, go to everywhere. Come to the embassy. Go and confront the officials with the information. Air it within one week. I can tell you part of what's happening. I'm sorry to say it, but this is within us. The present government in Ghana came on the grounds of Nigeria bashing. I have listened to things some of their top leaders have said all over the world in big and major places. We did not take it back, sir. If we take it back, they will sit up. So, media strategy one use their own media, but you know, every see, I have been a press man. There is no absolute truth in the media. The truth is, the media, any truth, even history, is truth as it is presented. Let us use our own media and get back to them. Let us see live cases. Let our media with this story say we want to go to their prisons to see Nigerians. Of course, they will turn you back. You broadcast it. Yes. You do, by the time you are through, run series of documentaries on Nigeria's relations. And sir, we take history. We look at history. Um, Prof, sir, Prof is my teacher. He was the dean of postgraduate school when I was a postgraduate student. So, but I want to say to something, sir. I want to reinforce what you have said, and perhaps, like we say in Ebola, and um, you, it's not only a dead person you position the neck well. Historically, Ghana got independence in '57 before us, not because they were better. We were taking care of home. We were the first African country that should have got independence. If you read the biography of Nkrumah, 
Abdinam Diaziki we sent him to the university in the U.S. that he attended after he had returned to Nigeria, uh, to Ghana. Zeke had been to that university, came here, met the young man when he was a media man here, mentored him to that university, and he came back. That rivalry has been there because we don't tell them the truth. They don't know. Historically, there is that rivalry. It's sibling rivalry. But the truth is that it's a rivalry between an elder brother and a younger brother. It's the rivalry all over Africa. Mandela captured it well in 1997 when the Commonwealth banned Nigeria. When he said that Nigeria is a very big elder brother that you cannot do without. But unfortunately, this elder brother is irresponsible. But you can always go back to him. So, sir, let's take back our image. Let's take them on step by step in very subtle forms, not frontal, not open. In a subtle form. The next again is, like Prof said, you can only preach to those you've seen. The people here are legitimate. The problems are the illegitimate ones. If they don't own us, we don't own them. But we know that they are our people. It will touch us when something goes wrong. If you have an irresponsible younger brother and he goes causing trouble, any day they will they bring him out to beat him up in the marketplace, it will touch you. He's your brother. You will want to save him. Let when we see those people, we'll reach out to them. But one thing is missing. Do we have helplines? If I'm in a problem there now, who do I call? How do I know? Can't we have Nigerian helplines at entry points? At the airport, at Aflao, at all the entry points, Nigerian community helpline. We need by, uh, Central, call this number. This area, call this number. This area, call this number. Let's know. If we have contacts, it will be easier. Even if the person is irresponsible and he is in a cell and he calls a number, we position these numbers in government places, police stations, immigration points, and also let them know. So we need structured, strategic ways to handle a bad situation. They have, you know, we've all talked here, Nigeria is bad. Is it? They have sold us as criminals and we have bought it. That's why we are owning up to it. We are bad, quite all right, just like any other person, any other community. We are good, like other communities, sir. So we cannot take ownership of bad and say it is ours. We are like them. Sir, we, we have also another point to market. That would be the third point. We, they are using our manpower. I was first on sabbatical in Legon, 2011-12. So I can tell you that Nigerian community takes care of more than 65% of Legon's budget, you, the income of the university. Nigerian students in that university pay a minimum of $10,000, or average of $10,000 per student times the number of students, how much do they generate? All the private universities, everywhere, we have this advantage that we supply to them. What are we getting back in return? Insults. So, and I can tell you, it's also the problem back home. I won't pay 10% of that sum for my child to get a degree in a, in, a, in a Ghanaian university. I am in that system, I know. The quality of the education you receive here is 80% inferior to what is in Nigeria. I can tell you authoritatively. I tell them here, when I will hold meetings, I am in the Department of English in Ilag. We have 15 professors in the university. The whole of one faculty here, two, two Nigerians. We will leave at the end of the year. They will shop for another set of Nigerians. But our people will come here and pay $10,000. But they will not pay 20000 Naira in the University of Lagos. The school fees, what an average student pays in the University of Lagos, in one session, to get a degree in English, is 12000 Naira. I am in that system. One two thousand, one two zero zero thousand naira. That's what a, a Nigerian pays there. Ghanaians are there paying twelve thousand naira. We will adopt them and say, "This is my child." 
Oh, you will adopt one local government in Nigeria. You know we are very diverse. Anybody is a Nigerian. They say, but in Niger if you ask Nigerians to donate 50, 50,000 Naira parents every year to contribute to that university, they will go on riot. But the same Nigerians will come here. 10,000 Naira for something 80% inferior to Nigeria. I have said it. I'm placing it on authority. Cite me anywhere. No Ghanaian degree is 20% up to the quality of a Nigerian degree. Except it's from any of the... You understand me? All our federal universities are better than any university here. What makes a university? It's not buildings. It's not trees. It's the quality of staff that will recycle and produce others. They don't have it. But we, even this advantage which we have, we don't know how to use. Do, do you understand me? So it is here that the embassy comes in. It is here that the individual communities come in. Let us take advantage of what they gain. They gain everything from us and insult us because we are not organized. Let us organize ourselves back and get back and retrieve that. So sir, that's the little I can say for now. There is a lot we have. Let's not take what we have been given. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Please, what is the name, sir? Augustine Wamba. Okay.